this is where all our work is done. So what are you going to do with all these underpants that you steal? Collecting underpants is just phase one. Phase one, collect underpants. So what's phase two? Hey, what's phase two? Phase one, we collect underpants. Yeah, 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 but what about phase two? Well, phase three is profit. Get it? I don't get it. You see, phase one, collect underpants. Phase two, phase three, profit. Oh, I get it. No, you don't, fat ass. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the sewers of Brooklyn, New York. I'm Nick the Rat. This is Nick the Rat Radio, episode 192. It is August 21st, 2019. And I'm Nick the Rat. Tonight, we're not talking about underwear gnomes. But then again, they could be. We're talking about sock gnomes. Or actually, just any thieving-ass gnomes there are out there. Actually, do you know what just, just happened? I usually crack a beer right now. But I... I can't find the beer cracker. That sounds a little racist. Uh, where? Hold on. Hold on a second, everybody. I know this is... Where is it? It was right here in front of me. Like, I started the show. I always have it right here, because this is how I do it. I don't have a... I don't have a bic on me. All I have is a... My phone. I'm not gonna... Uh... Wait, what is... Holy shit. If if I can move the camera around and you guys are watching it, there's... It's in the corner of the sewer drain near a little, tiny little hole. It's like half in a hole near... Hold on one sec. What the fuck? Hey, what the fuck? Ugh. Something was tugging on it in there. These little gnomes are... Okay, we're doing a whole episode on thieving-ass gnomes, basically. Ugh. Get this beer open. Okay. Maybe if I... I can probably cover the hole in the wall with this little beer cap here. Let me stick this down there. I'll be right back. One second. Let me get this thing up. Okay. All right. You know what? I'm also going to be a little proper today. Oh, I already got a shot of tequila in my cup. I'm going to pour some of this beer. Uh, I'm having a Brooklyn lager. Is this like when you have a bad internet connection uh, kind of beer? I'm going to have one of these. I'm going to pour that in here. Because I want to be I want to be proper and have it in a cup. I'm pouring it like shit just to get the sound effect. Oh my god, all that head. I usually don't pour it that badly. I was just going for the sound effect. You got to tip the cup and all that and blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Wow. This is going to be a fun show, everybody. We've got music. We got news. We got phone calls. We do have today. We have an Illuminati story coming up later. So if anything, you know, if you're listening, you're going to get at least that out of it. Um, We've got the news. We got... Uh, the, the the gnomes. It's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a real fun show. Also, also, might happen. Might. I don't really want to uh, tickle your nipple and then let you down, but a gnome expert might call in. Okay? I was talking to him couple days ago, because I actually had a bigger gnome experience, which I'll be talking to you about when we get back from the break. But he said he would try to call me. I think it was a he. I forget. I was really drunk when I talked to him. It might have been a woman. But, uh, yeah, KDE is better than... Um, but we'll be... Uh, we got a chat room going too, so if you if you want to join the fun, you could chat in either IRC Discord or in the Twitch chat, and they all interact. 
and they all show up on my Twitch stream. If you're watching live, you could watch this thing with cats in the background. What is that going on back there? It looked like he was licking an asshole or something. He is like, oh my God, this is getting a little X-rated. That cat is going deep in his bunghole. Okay. Let me just take a quick sip. Also, if you would like to interact, you could always call the number 917-719-5923. You could leave a voicemail. I'll be opening the phone lines a little bit later. And you could also email me at nick at nicktherat.com. If you put the title of the email to Gas Blast, I will read it on the air. I've been known to read almost anything on the air. I've almost been thrown off the air for some of the things that I have read. But not yet. Twitch hasn't caught on yet, so don't tell them. Okay, we're going to... Let's start off the night with a nice uh, nice song. We're going to get back. We're going to talk more about these goddamn gnomes. What they're doing. How you could stop them. What they're made of. Uh, what do they taste like, maybe? Uh, anyway, let me... Nick the Rat Radio, this is Three Chain Links, Happiest Days, coming at you from the sewers into your ears.
You are now listening to Chris the Cat the on f- the Dark Sewer Network. We're not listening. To, this is not Chris the Cat with Nick the Rat. Jeez. Thought I threw that. I thought I burned that clip. How does it even get in here anymore? <clears throat> All right, so why am I talking about thieving ass gnomies? Last, uh, this past weekend, I was out in the Poconos partying it up, you know? I, I know some, uh, I know some people out there, okay? Mansions, okay? You might think, oh, Nick the Rat, you live in a sewer under a tree, SpongeBob SquarePants. No, um, but I, I, know, I know some famous people. And they got mansions. And uh, me and my, 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 my buddy, Ricky the Raccoon, we were out back. Uh, we, we were drinking. And we started to dig up some holes in, in the backyard of this mansion for, for reasons. We were trying to make like a fire pit, okay? We weren't just digging out holes to dip our nuts and hide them in, okay? We weren't trying to like hide nuts, even though I hit a couple of good ones. I'm going to go back next year, pick those out. Uh, we were digging. We had this uh, trowel, a shovel. Is that what they're called? Like a, it's like a gardening shovel. A tr- I think it's a trowel. And we were digging. We were getting deep. We were getting deep in there. Me and him were having a great time throwing dirt at each other and stuff. It was, it was a fancy time. Drunk off our asses. Fucking covered in dirt. Throwing it at each other. Mud pies, etc., etc. Getting ready for, you know, because at nighttime you, you, you need the fire pit. So we were, we were making that. And, and then all of a sudden the shovel was gone it was just gone we we were we were drunk but we weren't that drunk and also we were in one area we were in like this little plot of land not too far from anything the fucking thing was gone it was just gone it was no longer to be found it was there and then not there so i started to look into how this could happen is it aliens? Aliens don't really go around stealing shovels. They steal people, virginity, your dignity, sometimes your wallet or your wife. But I did find that there are a bunch of thieving ass gnomies out there that'll just take your stuff right. Like you could just be right there and looking at it, and then you turn around and it's gone. This has happened to a lot of people. I did a lot of research, let me tell you. Tons of research since I got back about 10 minutes ago. No no LSD involved, none of that. No uh, no cream pies, no LSDs. Just a lot of drinking in mud and dirt and laughing. And uh, just two bros having a fun time out there, you know? I've also learned about how sometimes when something goes missing, it could sometimes reappear without you even, bow, it's right, like I'm looking at my table, my Bic lighter's missing, and then I look away, and then I look back, and bam, it's back again. I could explain this, I did the research, I know how it happens. And no, it's not the gnomes bringing it back and fucking with your face. It's uh, a whole other thing. I'm going to bring that. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But just like, just like, just, just like I have to make a folder. Hold on one second. I have to make a folder here called Papa that Bam. I've got to do a little programming during the show a little bit every now and then. You just got to make things flow nice. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Just like sometimes uh, the gnome taketh away, sometimes somebody else giveth the back. And hopefully, please God, let this be Zindu and not some freak. Eh, It's fine if it's a freak, though. I love freaks. Okay, here we go. The news. Hey, hey, everybody, it's your favorite alien. I'm back. Yay. Uh, I might have one less penis, but that's never stopped me before. <laughs> Zindu has returned to the sewer. 
And I'm only bringing you quality news this week, Bill. All right, that's that's probably a lie. There's barely any quality news anyway. Uh, let's look. Let's look through my little Rolodex of news stories that have not been touched yet today. Area 51 storm in the place. Yes, that uh, the two million people that RSVP'd on Facebook is really starting to freak the place out. Uh, we passed this with a caveat that this may or may not happen, said District D Commissioner Kevin Phillips. We're just trying to do the best we can to prepare, fair, prepare for something we know not of. We have no picking idea. Wow, he actually said picking. No, pi- isn't that racist? Uh, we have no picking idea what we're going to face, if anything. Well, maybe if they go to the airports and check to see if people have any flights coming in, they'd be able to tell. I don't think most people are walking there. I don't think a lot of people are going to be driving there. There's probably going to be a lot of flights coming in, so just check that out. Uh, California resident Maddie Roberts created this event called Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us in June after listening to an episode of Joe Rogan Experiment Podcast. Yeah, let's let's give Joe Rogan a little uh, little exposure here. A little uh, some fucking free advertisement for Joe. Why the hell not? Lincoln County is home of the town of Rachel, the self-proclaimed UFO capital of the world, located on State Route 375, dubbed in 1996, the Extraterrestrial Highway. Well, the new Extraterrestrial Highway is down in the sewer, uh, because I'm here and I'm actually out. I'm not hiding in, uh, in prison or anything. Uh, so they're all scared that there's actually going to be two million people showing up. Hell, they should be happy. If, if, if it turns out to be like uh, the fire festival, guess what? It won't fucking matter. At least you'll have uh, you'll have a lot of people putting money into the, the local... Fu- what? This is stupid. Nobody's going there, right? Okay, so don't worry. There might be like a hundred people that show up if you're lucky. And all those people are going to be fucking weirdos anyway. They're probably going to bring like their own <clears throat> camping equipment and, and machine guns and... They'll have barbecues. You don't have to worry. They can bring their own food. Uh, this is Zindu signing off. I'll see you guys there on uh, uh, the, the September 19th. I'm going the day before. We're going to meet up. We're going to storm Mary 51 then. And I will be back a little bit later with hopefully more realer news. Post to that faker news. Uh, we might have updated information on Area 51. Oh, yes. You're going to love this one. Ooh, spray it all over my face. Let's hear it. All righty. Coming straight to your face is the Storm Area 51 alien stock. They're having a get-together. And, in fact, it's supposed to take place four days before the official Area 51 Naruto run. And, as they say, it's going to be held in Rachel, Nevada, Located down the extraterrestrial highway, the Little Alien Inn is a great destination to plug in your GPS to find the right place. And they've already got early arrival set up on the 19th. Well, damn, because I think that might interfere with when I break into Area 51. I mean, I'm not breaking into Area 51, but hey, that's uh, maybe that can be a distraction. Oh, man, I got to practice my Naruto run. Yeah, as long as they're sober enough to actually do the run. Might be more like a Naruto worm. You ever see when you do the worm, you get on the floor and you do that. Yeah, they get on the floor and they just start inching forward bit by bit. (laughs) And then they just stop, roll over and throw up because they're still hungover. Could happen. Might work. Actually, that might work even better because if you're on the floor, you load down. The snipers won't be able to hit you because you're doing the worm across the sand. I'm down. I think that's going to work pretty well. Oh, good point. So, yep, there's Alien Stock September 19th through September 22nd in Rachel, Nevada, which is the closest place for them to be able to get to Area 51 in one big group. Uh, Are you going? I'm thinking about it. I mean, okay, I am on the Facebook page, and I did click interested. They still have 2 million people going, but they also have 1.5 million people still interested in it. (sighs) Fuck, that's a lot of fucking people. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Um, Well, we'll be reporting on it at other points in time, definitely. I could definitely say so. Uh. The song we played earlier 
was on SoundCloud. All the music is CC by. That's the new sexual preference for musicians. They don't want to be considered him, hers, or anything. They want to be considered CC buys. So uh, make sure you um, 3.0 as well. There was CC by one, CP by two, CC CC by two point fives. They they extinct now, boy. Now they CC by threes. I, I think. Um, uh, let's listen to another CC by three song. This is by everybody's favorite Akira. Got no mercy, baby. No mercy for Naruto running into Area Fifty One. Here we go. <laughs> Show's fantastic. No, so that's what you're saying on the show. Oh. <laughs> well, let's help him out. Hold on a second. Let's see if we can uh, make it work for Nick. All right, we can one genie and then we can move on. Nick the Rat is great in the sewer. <laughs> no, you can use that. That was uh, Akira with No Mercy. Sorry, ow. No mercy there for Akira, and no mercy for the Nar- Naruto Runners. Naruto Runners. Um, so, as we were discussing, Steven Nomi's are actually in a war. They're in a war with... Hold on, I gotta get my notes really quick. I have so many notes all over the place. 
It's 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 like a mess down here. I gotta really organize my stuff. Maybe like change around the stream a little bit. Maybe maybe make a stuff like different and all that. But but whatever. I found it. They are at war with the sock goblins. The sock goblins are are fighting against the thieving gnomies. They actually do bring the stuff back. So the the gnomes carry your stuff out like you're missing a sock you're missing your underwear you're missing you're missing your car keys you're missing your remote control you're miss a plethora of goodies you're missing but sometimes they come back just like that and it's the goblins that bring them back this is all probably true i have actually was looking into other reasons of what might be happening uh, I'll tell you more about what might be happening other than the thieving gnomies later. But, but the gnomes and the goblins are at war. They're both fucking tiny magical creatures that just don't like each other. I don't know if it's because they can't breed with each other. There might be like this fucking Romeo and uh, Gnomeo and Goblinette going on or something. Like there was these two houses that were... And nothing was coming out. Some, some, something like that, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm only an expert on some things. Uh, we have a email address. And, and Nick at NickTheRat.com. That's me. Hi. Uh, we have, uh, and if you put a gas blast in the title, like this fine uh, emailer did, we'll read it on the air. Just like that. And... It's, it's a good way to bring the community uh, together. Uh, before, before I do read this gas blast, I just want to say that like this show is, is about bringing uh, people together. So we all uh, come together at the same, in a big cum ball, sort of, at the same time. And, and we don't like to talk about like religion or, or politics on here because I think there's so much other stuff out there to talk about that nobody discusses. And most of the time people are talking, it's it's about, like, ugh, political garbage. And we don't need that. We don't need that all day long. It'll make you go crazy. So that's what this show is all about. It's about people coming together at the same time. So let's kind of plan that out later. Maybe we could uh, do uh, well, Let's read this gas blast before I'm, I'm way off topic now. Here, here we go. Okay, gas blast. Where's my... Okay, I got the thing here. This is a reminder to your viewers to purchase Barapper coin, the hottest new coin. I, I don't know what... Is that really real? Barapper? B-Rapper? Okay, let's look this up here. B-Rapper coin. If this isn't real... I should block that email address here. Brapper coin. It's real. Brappers. Brapper coin. Brapper token. B rap. Coin request delta. Ether flyer. Crypto moonshots. Reddit. What? Maybe this is real. About Brapper. The standard. Oh. <laughs> I should be live on the no agenda stream. Unless they uh shut me off on there. Um I don't remember you taking it over. I I have I see it right here. Stream no agenda stream time 41 minutes. Oh well. They're missing out, I guess. Okay, either way, but rapper. I can't be sidetracked by these technical difficulties that Sir Bemro should be taken care of or Void Zero. No, I don't know. Um, oh, see, yeah, I'm on there. I, I don't care about the stream title. I'm not here for time. Okay, but rapper. The standardization of adult webcam tipping tokens on adult video sites is here. Securely validating cam model streams using cryptographic signatures to help models verify themselves to their audience. 
Yeah, so get your barapper coins so you could fapper the barapper. Punch, punch, jizz. It's all in the mind. Especially when you're looking at fat booty. Okay, whatever. Um, Maybe we can do another gas blast really quick. It's getting hot in the sewer. I have to invest in that. Um, gas blast. Naga, Naga, Naga work here anymore. I don't... We did a show on the Naga last week. We're doing shows on gnomes this week. I don't know what you're doing. All right. Let's uh, leave the rest of the gas blast. Let's spread them out. Let's spread those wide open so we can uh, see them a little bit later. Do I have... Wait, do I have a lot of more? I don't know. Hold on one second. Ah, it's hot. Sewer hotness. Okay, you know what? While I look for those, we should play some news. Let's do the news. Let's dump that news out there. I'll play this news right here. Welcome back to Nick the Rat Radio's News Network. Dark Sewer News Network Radio News. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Zindu, and I'm going to tell you some news that won't fucking affect your life at all. Isn't that great? Aren't you sick of people telling you this news is like you gotta fucking believe this shit that if you don't, you're a fucking Nazi? <clears throat> well, well, if you don't believe this news, then it doesn't fucking matter. So don't believe it, believe whatever you want. A uh, man urinates on Starbucks cups, coffee filters, and employee sink before fleeing the store, police say. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, a little gassy. The medication they got me on is fucking with me. This happened in Pennsylvania. Some asshole at 9.45 p.m. walked behind the counter, whipped out his uh, pistol, and started to relieve himself in the sink and on the filters, etc., etc., etc. There still has not been any uh, arrests made or uh, anything. There is a picture of the guy... He kind of looks like a hippie. He's got long hair, beard. He's wearing a red shirt. He's a white guy with glasses. And then there's a piss stain on his pants. Apparently, he wasn't able to fucking get all the piss out of his dick into the fucking Starbucks place. Ah. So he actually pissed himself, too, like a fucking loser. Uh, the, the, the picture of him says, notice the piss stain on his pants. I don't know if you can't notice the piss stain on your pants. It's fucking... Like, the first thing you're going to notice when you look at this guy is the fucking big old piss stain on his on his shit. See, th there's a problem with this, man. When people come into your place of uh, worship or of your place of where you're working, and they start pissing on you or, or they try to steal from you, you should have the right to use force. This guy should have got pushed, pushed over the counter, and had, like, you know those, the fuck, what is that, the thing they make the the... The lattes with the, like the hot stick that makes the the milk foam and steam. They should have stuck that up his asshole. Oh, this guy! This this guy is a menace to society. He's probably he's he's worse than like a terrorist. That's all I can really say over here. It's, you, you, I'm not I'm not a big Starbucks fan. I'm not fucking trying to say yay Starbucks. That's not what I'm all about. But what I am saying is that there should be uh, there should be ways to beat the shit out of people. Now, I'm sure if anybody at Starbucks touched this fucking asshole, they would have been locked up and sued and been in the doghouse, while this guy is probably just going to get a slap on the wrist and maybe give some, maybe some medication. I don't know. But if you do know where this guy is, let justice come down on his face in, in, the, in, in, in the form of, I guess, the law. So call 717-569-6401 or submit a tip via the police department's Crime Watch website. Starbucks has no further comment on the incident other than that they're coming out with a new fist-flavored coffee later this month. What? And they hope you try it out. This has been Zindu. We'll be back with more news later. Bye. I think Zindu's practicing to be on SNL or something. He's uh, <laughs> gearing up for writing them jokes. Real funny, Zindu. Real funny. Uh, we we have a lot more show to come together. Wait, what? Uh, I, I do also have to say, I don't know if I said this yet, but 
This show is made possible by viewers like you. If it will, if it wasn't for you, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to everybody here. Okay, there's there's like at least a million people listening right now, but those people don't matter. Only you do. Okay. So like, okay, let me just. I'm sitting. Hold on, let me get on your shoulder here. Okay. It's just you and me. Just Nick the Rat and you. Who are you? That's up to you to decide. But it's just you and me right now, buddy. Or Budita? Is there a female version of Buddy? Baby? Ba ba maybe Baby? Maybe Baby Buddy? Uh, okay, you and me, Baby Buddy. We are doing this together. Now, now a way we could do this even better is if... If you send me money <laughs> or brapper coins, I, I prefer actually USDs. So if you go to my website and go to donate, you could send me uh, money or subscribe. You could you could send me a dollar, or you could subscribe for four twenty a month. That's like a dollar an episode. I spend at least two, three, four, five. I spend like six. Seven hours a week making a, a three-hour long show every week. And, uh, yeah, if you appreciate it, uh, we're, I'm using the value-for-value value method created by John C. Dvorak. <laughs> Actually, it's probably made by Adam Curry. I think uh, John's just riding on Adam's uh, coattails at, at this point now. Uh, Adam's dragging John along the sand, and no, I'm joking. <laughs> but I do, I do also have advertisements. We have actually a, a live sponsor coming up later. But right now we're gonna play. We're gonna play some advertisements for you because, because not only. Do I do this for value for value? And um, I'm totally supported by the listeners. I'm also supported by gigantic corporate conglomerates that pay me money to make you buy their stuff. And if you don't buy their stuff, then you you have you have you have issues basically. Like, what do we have this week? Do we have? Do you have anything good? Oh, real okay. Ah, oh, we're selling this one again. Okay. Hold on, I have to bring this up. They're they're paying us extra this week to to promote this year product. Uh, we're uh, time for some advertisements. Then we're gonna get back to the, the, the music. Then. When it's late at night. I like to rub mayonnaise all over my titties. Get Dark Sewer Mayo Lubrication for your titties today. Made from 100% real mayonnaise. Rub the mayo right into your titties and you're gonna feel great. My mom used mayonnaise lubrication on her titties and they're fucking gorgeous. That bitch is 69 years old and her titties look like they're on a nice, fresh 13-year-old girl. They are the, the... Oh, my God. You just got to get some of this mayonnaise. Squirt it all over your titties. Rub it in. Grab your nipples because they might fly the fuck off because this lubrication is amazing. Order now. 917-719-5923. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Nick the Rat does not sponsor stuff. Uh, but I do not con uh, con condone. Um, one more advertisement. Dark sewer bras. 
made from 100% reclaimed cotton. From only the softest toilet paper in the sewer. Why not treat yourself today and keep the boys safe and comfortable? For only $69.99, you could have a dark sewer bra today. Ow! That clip was not properly compressed. Okay, um... We're gonna play another song. Maybe I should do a a voicemail. Okay, let's do a, a fuck. There's so much. This show is gonna be. We might run long tonight, everybody. There's a lot of show here tonight. Uh, we do have voicemails to play. Holy shit! I can't. This can't be right. There's not 25 voicemails, is there? There might. There might be. There might be 20. Oh, f okay. Let's just. Let's just play this one second here. Yeah, this is Fru Fru. And uh, just a couple things to comment on briefly here. Um, as for the. As for the women who are trying to. Uh, to bake some kind of bread as a result of. Yeast infected stuff. Um, I would say that. Um, well, nothing about bread, but I do know that that uh, there. I saw this actually a uh, case of a woman who was making a big deal about making uh, making beer out of the products of their, of, of their yeast infections, and uh, it was prop, or, uh, properly pointed out that the vaginal yeast does not produce anything. That's worth a damn in making beer. And I suspect it's probably the same in terms of making bread. Enough of that stuff. The second thing, of course, is the green beeps. And all I can say is that it put me in mind of a thought that I've had for a long time, actually, that maybe I need to ingest something that could actually alter my cat brain enough to actually see the sound of various beeps, or just about everything beeps and stuff, but uh, anyway, yeah, whether you see it or eat it or what you do, this is Fru Fru saying meow for now, and remember, it just beeps! <laughs> What's... Hold on. Did Fru Fru just sound like uh, Buford T there for a second? Wait, is Fru Fru the talking cat Buford T? Now I'm confused. So am I. The sound did you hear it? Did it sound like kind of Bufordy? It it oh wow. That really was a little bit Bufordy. That yeah. was a bit on the Buford side, so I'm not quite sure where it came from. Is Buford T from Tennessee Fru Fru the talking cat? I don't know. I don't well, know. is is Fru Fru on PCP but not THC or ecstasy? <laughs> Very good question. Very, very good question. We are VR. We're going to listen to another song, and then we're going to open up the phone lines. Maybe the gnome specialist will call in. Then we're going to talk about other stuff, too. We have the Temple of the Immortal Zombie Fish.
another beer. That was Zombie Fish, uh, Temple of the Immortal. Let's have a little swiggy here. Mmm, tasty. And we have a shitload of voicemails. I don't think I'm going to be able to play all of them. So I think I know what most of them might be. Sometimes, uh... Sometimes there's a lot of people out there. Since I do bring people together, they get they get real drunk and then they give you a call. This is this looks like there's a drunk caller that called me a lot of times. Let's play a voicemail really quick. Then we're gonna listen to Illuminatia tell a story, and then we'll open up the phone lines, and then we'll continue the show. Arkansas, but anyways, here in Arkansas, you know. I've got a friend, he's got an Islander, they're shipping them all in, it's Marshall Leeds, and because they're shipping them in to replace the Mexicans, What? because all the Mexicans are getting shipped out by ice and stuff, and they're all like, oh no, you're fucking illegal, but I, they like blew up all these fucking bombs on that island and stuff, and they're like shipping all these fucking Islanders in and stuff. All right. Uh, yeah. See, he's pretty. He's pretty drunk. Let's see if we have any more drunk stuff here. Undercover, Nick. I'm undercover. So I'm. I'm like really undercover. Right, yeah. Hey, Nick. I hope you can hear me. Hey. Fuck you! Whoa! Jesus Christ! God damn it! Is the place hurting? Fucking god damn it! <laughs> uh, Fane, if you want to sell products on the Dark Sewer Network, just uh, email Nick at nicktherat.com with uh, the product, and I'll pass it on to the scientist, and they'll pass it on to the uh, the marketers. And then the marketers will pass it on to the creative team. And then the creative team will pass it on to the producers. And then the producers will pass it over to the, the directors. And the directors will uh, purchase voice actors. And then they will also purchase musicians. And it'll all come together in a big old cumball. Uh, geez, this, there's a lot more... A lot of voicemails there. Let's play one more voicemail. Not from extremely drunk guy, but from possibly secondly most drunk guy. Hey, Nick the Rat. It's uh, Prof War. I was just, you know, I wanted to make a note about that um, that hobo piss, that Franzia hobo piss that I sent you. It has a bit of a background. Oh, there is. That's um, good stuff. A little I liked important. it. So there's a difference between tramps, hobos, and bums, you know, basically. There can be some... Okay, I, I paused the voicemail. Tramps, hobos, and bums. Now, tramps. This is this is my personal opinion before he gives it. just want to see if I got it right. Uh, tra tramps are kind of like a, a fancy homeless person. Like a homeless person that doesn't smell so much... That you can't sleep with them. That's a tramp. Uh, uh, a, a, a hobo. A hobo is completely in the lifestyle of being, uh, homeless. They're, they're so homeless that homeless is too long of a word for them to say. So they just say hobo. What is the, the hoe is the home and the bow is, what does the bow stand for? Actually, what the fuck does hobo stand for? We have to do a quick search about hobo. Maybe even tramp. This is a very interesting conversation here. Hobo is a leather handbag and wallet for women. 
No. Uh, hobo. A migrant worker or homeless vagrant, especially one who is impro- in- impoverished. The term originated from the western, probably northwestern United States around 18. Unlike Tramp, who works only when forced to, and a bum who does not work at all, a hobo is a traveling worker. Wow, okay, well then I'm wrong. Let's listen to the rest of this voicemail. Hey, Nick the Rock. You know, basically. There can be some overlap. Um, so hobos ride trains. That's how they get around. Bums just kind of, uh, you know, fuck around. And, yeah, bums are basically stationary. And tramps... Bums don't work at all. Like Charlie Chaplin are the ones who, I guess, back through the street with big pants and shit. But anyway, they each have a dis- distinct um, taste. And you know? smell and flavor. This is hobo piss. And so I'm... Um, recommending that it be, uh, you know, maintained at the temperature at which it, you know, uh, left the body. Okay, so that that's the perfect way to enjoy it. Then, oh my God, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I think. <laughs> Thanks, Prof. That's a little too far. It's Boy, not. no visual. You go further. Send pictures. I want to see video. I need diagrams and graphs. Where else could you go than Nick the Rat Radio to learn the difference between tramps, hobos, and bums? Charlie Chaplin was a, sort of a tramp. He only worked when he had to. When when he was trying to get that, you know, this... And then he had to, like, go out to get work to please his... Um, Yeah. So bums are at the bottom of the barrel. They're just like, fuck this, not doing anything. Hobos are like, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying. I'm going to, I'm a, I'm a nomadic. Hobos are like nomadic tramps. I don't know. This is very strange stuff. Okay, wait. We we should just go right to Illuminati from there. She's neither a tramp, hobo, or bum. She is a um, storyteller. It's like the fourth level. (laughs) I'm joking. I'm joking. Here we go. Settle down and listen up for story time With a girl whose name is kind of hard to rhyme Poor old Skip. I'll read it to you. Stephanie, Joe, and their two girls, Natalie and Jessica, decided to take a long walk on a sunny Saturday morning with their dog, Skip. Gosh, it sure is beautiful today, said Natalie as the family left their house. God is gracious, isn't he? replied Joe. The family laughed together and they set off to walk the trails around their house. Come on, old Skip, yelled Jessica the younger of the two girls. She took Skip's leash, and she ran ahead of the rest of the family. Dear, do you have your zapper? asked Stephanie. Yeah, Mom, said Jessica, waving her 20 kilovolt electroshock rifle in one tiny hand. Ha ha, that's my sweet little angel, said her father. Make sure the safety's off. Daddy, said Jessica, putting one hand on her hip and pouting. I know, I'm not a baby anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, Pumpkin. I just can't believe how fast you've grown, said her father. The family continued along the path. Old Skip was sniffing around when suddenly his fur raised up and he growled. What is it, old Skip? asked Natalie. From out of the bushes, a four-foot-tall amphibious mutation that looked like an amalgamation of a frog and a centipede came scrambling to ambush Jessica. Its three lidless, bulbous eyes were red with rage, and its wide mouth was lined with two sets of serrated teeth. Its lumpy body was suspended by seven legs, three sets on the sides of its body, and one large one that protruded right above its ass, where a tail would usually be. Uh, The foot on this leg slapped the pavement loudly as it bounded towards Jessica in an awkward bobbing motion. Its scream sounded like if a woman was screaming with her nose pinched and with pudding in her throat. 
Jessica pointed the electroshock weapon at the creature and pulled the trigger. A concentrated beam of electricity shot out towards the creature, and within a matter of milliseconds, the creature became a puddle of green, brown, and red bits of skin and entrails, with a couple legs sprawled here and there. Jessica lowered her rifle and smiled back at her dad. See, Dad? She asked. Boy, you are a big girl, said her father. The family continued their walk. Skip started to whine. Why is he acting that way? Asked Jessica. I don't know what his deal is, said Joe. I've talked to the vet about it, and he thinks he may have a case of anxiety. What's that dog have to worry about? Asked Stephanie. Ah, uh, he'll grow out of it, said Natalie. Maybe he wants a zapper, asked Jessica. Yeah, a doggy zapper, said <laughs> Natalie. The two girls laughed and linked hands and skipped along the path while poor old Skip trailed behind and looked around nervously at the bushes. What the fuck, thought Skip to himself. How the fuck are these people okay with this? When the fuck did we talk to the vet? Skip looked up at the two young female humans to see if he could detect any fear in them whatsoever. There was nothing but bliss and smiles as they skipped along happily. I want to go back to that fucking dog kennel, Skip thought to himself. Fuck this stupid family. I... Skip's thoughts were interrupted by another monstrosity that hobbled out of the bushes and caused Skip to yelp in surprise. The creature responded with its own gurgling scream. It was quickly silenced by a loud pop from the zapper, this time from Natalie, and the creature was reduced to another bubbling, smoking glob. Skip stood mesmerized by the glob that was once a vicious frog monster. He heard the younger female human laugh, and Skip felt a tug on his leash. The tug surprised him, and he jumped as he was tugged. Gee, Daddy, you're right about Skip. He seems awful nervous, said Jessica. Maybe we should take him to the vet. He'll probably prescribe some kind of drug to calm him down a little, you know? Take the edge off, said her father, thoughtfully. The fuck I do, thought Skip, looking up at him. Poor old Skip, said Jessica. Why do they call me old Skip? I've only known these fuckers for a day, thought Skip. The family continued along uneventfully for another half hour. Skip started to calm down as time went on, but he hadn't let his guard down. Daddy, I'm hungry, said Natalie. Oh, I am too, said her father. Let's go eat lunch. The family all vocalized their agreement, and they turned around to head back home. They passed the now dried-up remains of the monster frogs, and Skip looked at them cautiously. Hey, Skip hasn't gone potty yet said Jessica. Why aren't you pooping, old Skip? Skip had been holding a shit for a long time, but was afraid to go until he was home and safe in the family's enclosed backyard. He was sure that as soon as he popped a squat, something would attack him from behind, and he didn't like the idea of being killed while he was in mid-shit. The family finally reached their home, and Skip immediately ran into the backyard so he could finally relieve himself. As he was shitting, he pondered this family situation. What the fuck is happening, he thought. Why are they all acting like this is completely normal? Are they insane? Has this always been happening? And what the fuck are those fucking centipede fucking frog fucks? <laughs> Skip thought back to when he was still in the kennel. The owners had taken him and the other dogs on many walks, and they had never run into anything like those weird frog things before. They didn't carry those metal kill things either. Skip realized that he'd been so deep in thought that he was still squatting, even though he'd finished his shit. He sat up and shook, flopping his ears, and he made his way back into the house. The mother was making sandwiches, and the father and two daughters sat at the table drinking lemonade. Skip studied them curiously. "'Why is Skip looking at us like that, Daddy?' asked Jessica. "Oh well, he probably wants to join us, don't you, old Skip?' "'No,' thought Skip." Come here, boy, called Joe. Skip sat down and stared. Boy, he's a weird dog, said Natalie. Well, he's just getting used to the house, said their mother. She brought over a plate full of sandwiches and sliced carrots. They began to eat. Suddenly, a screen on the wall popped on. The family all turned to look, and they were smiling as though they were anticipating something good. Whoa! What happens next? You're gonna have to wait till part two.
which comes up a little bit later in the show. Yeah, I, I space it out, you know, I don't, it's, it's like a 15 minute long story. Great story. But you know, at, uh, I try to keep it in chunks. I could probably maybe split it into three, but that would be a little bit crazy. To split it, I split it into two. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm aroused. You're aroused? But from Skip or from the uh, the shit or the uh, the tasers? Maybe all three. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's see here. Where, uh, where, where are we in the show? Um, you just went through a bunch of voicemails from KevBot, and then you did a Luminosia story. Uh, I think you might be due for some ads. Maybe. Ads? No, we're due for a song right now. I think we're ready for a song. We'll come back and we'll talk more about missing objects and the genome projects. Okay, we got Diamond Days, who's sometimes in my Discord chat. I can't believe that. That's weird. Most of the people that I uh, like on SoundCloud don't ever interact with me. But Diamond Days and Akira, who actually I love a lot, they 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 they, they they're there. It's, it, do, do you have any idea how long I believe that you were saying Diamond Days? Uh, I'm gonna or, guess. Or maybe it was. Or maybe years. it was Dave. Diamond Dave. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave sounds like a porno star. That I used to watch back in the '60s, good old Diamond Dave. He was a no. It's Di Diamond Ace, and it's it's got a lot of weird Japanese letters in there. He's he's in the Discord chat. I don't know if he. Uh, that's the song we're about to listen to. We're about to listen to Nimbus, Antark, Antarctid, Deep Blue. Deep blue. Deep blue. <laughs> Here we go.
Oh man, that's Diamond Ace, Diamond, Diamond Trace, Diamond Face, Di et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Nimbus Antarctic. We're back, everybody, to Nick the Rat Radio. I am Nick the Rat. We are talking about thieving gnomes tonight. They steal stuff when you're not looking. There is other explanations for this though the, um i i'm not a i'm not a total believer in the paranormal i am a skeptic so i like to keep an open eye an open open a uh, hole of uh stuff you know st stuff hole i like to keep my my stuff hole open so i looked this up it's called uh DOP, D-O-P, Disappearing Object Phenomenon. It's uh, when items disappear and reappear. And in this article that I read, they do not mention gnomes or goblins having a war. But I still personally think it's gnomes and goblins. I've seen, I got a gnome hole up in the sewer. I'm seeing it. It's It's real. But... There are other possible explanations for this. Now, everything I'm about to say is probably bullshit, okay? So just put it to the back of your mind. Don't really listen to this segment of the show. Junk. Junk science here. Uh, possibility number one. Absent-mindedness. You might just forget where you put something. When examining such occurrences as DOP, you must first consider the most ordinary possibility that the person simply misplaced the object or forgot where they put it. This is bullshit though because I I was we looked for it. We were in a an area we didn't go very far. We had the shovel and it was gone. Okay? Wasn't absent-mindedness, it actually vanished. So that's why I think absent-mindedness is bullshit. For for this case at least. Maybe this maybe this happens, but not now. Another possibility is the borrower. You might let somebody borrow something and you forget about it. But that's not what happened here. Because as I said, we were we didn't leave the area. The thing vanished. Nobody borrowed it. Okay, now we're getting a little good here. There is the possibility of the poltergeist. Now, the poltergeist might actually be the gnome. They might have their DOP occurrence mixed up between poltergeist and gnome here because, um, you know, if you don't see it, you might think it's a poltergeist. Probably a gnome, though. Uh... I also like this one. This is a good possible pass, piss, pissable option. Temporary invisibility. Yes, I could see this too. Sometimes maybe your item or items fall into another dimension. We don't really know what's going on here. People say there's 13 dimensions, which which it sounds like bullshit. If there's more than one dimension, why stop at 13? There's probably an infinite amount of dimensions in one direction and then in the other as well. Why stop at there? Oh, there's 13. Oh, that's stupid. But yes, maybe your object is temporarily or permanently in another dimension, making it invisible. It could, it could happen. It could happen. Um, dimensional shit. Wait, so actually they're saying that it might have been invisible? I've never touched something that wasn't there, though. So that invisibility thing is bullshit. I don't like that one at all. They do talk about dimensional shift. So, yeah. But they don't mention gnomes in this goddamn article. Piss me off. Um, let's play some new ooh, 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 news. This is Hindu reporting to you for the Dark Sewer News Network. 
Uh, we're going to arts and cultures uh, section of the news today. And in the news, we have David Lynch names his five favorite books of all time Ooh. as of August 20th, 2019. At a later date, this list might change, or maybe he was just lying to make a news article. Don't really know exactly why they did this, but they did this. So we're going to go over David Lynch's top five books, uh, because, hey, maybe you want to read them too. I don't know. Some people like to imitate other artists, so please, imitate away. Should we start with number five? I don't know. Does this count up? Does it count down? I'm guessing number five is probably like the number one. But let's just do it as a count up to number one, starting from number five, as this list says. Doesn't really say if this is in any sort of fucking order, so I can't really guarantee it, so don't take my word for it. Number five, The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Number four, Anonymous Photographs by Robert Flynn Johnson. Number three, the Art Spirit by Robert Henry. Number two, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Okay. Number Wait. one, The Name Above the Title by Frank Capra. There you go. Um, if you also want, uh, David Lynch came out with his own book entitled, uh, what is that what they're called? It was a bunch of short little meditative little pieces of shit. It was a good book. I actually think Nick has that one there. I once borrowed it while I was taking a shit, read I, through it pretty much during the entire shit. It, it uh, came it. out and enlightened. It's called Catching the Big Fish by there David Lynch. So if you're a Lynch fan, check out those books. You might find some inspiration to make some fucking weird movies yourself. Anyway, this is uh, Zindu coming back at you. I'm feeling like a new man, baby. I'm not sick anymore. A new man with one less penis. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll be back later with a little bit more news. Bye. <laughs> David Lynch is coming out with a uh, Twin Peaks a box set in December for one hundred thirty dollars. It's got season one, season two, season three, and Fire Walk with Me, and I think six hours of unseen footage and commentary and all that other stuff. Um, I might have to buy that. Yeah, it was, it's a uh, F Y O D O R. That's the spelling for it. Yeah, I might have to buy that. Because new shoes. Uh, let's read a quick uh, David Lynch thing, which might give you inspiration or something. I don't know if it will. This one is called Keep At It. Do, do I get sued if I read books on air without paying David Lynch? I hope not. Uh Keep at it. This sounds like an ad for Nike. Wow, that cat just ran to the water. Sorry, I'm uh, doing five things at once here. Uh, it's such tricky business. I have to do it like, like Lynch a little bit. It's such a tricky business. You want to do your art, but you've got to live. So you've got to have a job. And then sometimes you're too, too tired to do your art. But if you love what you're doing and you're going to keep on doing it anyway. But if you love what you're doing, you're going to keep on doing it anyway. I've been very lucky. Along the way, there are people who help us. I've had plenty of those people in my life who've helped me go to the next step. And you get that help because you've done something. So you have to keep doing it. So much of what happened to me is good fortune. But I would say try to get a job that gives you some time. 
get your sleep and a little bit of food and work as much as you can. There's so much enjoyment doing what you love. Maybe this will open doors and you'll find a way to do what you love. I hope you do. There we go. That's a little bit of David Lynch from Catching the Big Fish. Ma'am. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have... More show to go. I have a lot of missing objects that are like big time, crazy, crazy time, missing object times. But we're probably going to go to another song now. And since we're talking about gnomes, let's switch, let's switch the music up a little bit to Mr. Gnome by Squid Robot Titar. Ew, Titar. All right, let's listen to this. See what, let's see what we got here. Mr. Gnome, Titar, Squid Robot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop that there. Stop it. Stop it right there. Hold your horse. Is. Hold your horses, everybody. Wait, hold on. I should open up the phone lines. Fucking A. Okay, the phone lines are open. If you are the gnome expert, please give me a call. 917-719-5923. Where are my socks? Where are my socks? Where are my socks? Where are my socks? Everybody join in. Where are my socks? 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 I want to know. Where are my socks? 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 Nine one seven seven one nine five nine two. Holy shit! I got a lot of voicemail. I used to rap. It's Jordan Peterson. I'd like to read you a little poem by a dear friend of mine. Oh, the goes. I'll grab the mic and I'll damage you. I'll crush your whole stamina. Here comes the medical examiner. One verse, and you're out for the count. Bring the ammonia, and make sure he sniffs the right amount. Wake him up and then ask him why did he attend this competition to get an ass kicking so tremendous. Boy, you know you shouldn't bother this. Oh, crap. Oh, man. Okay, well, we'll start that poem over after this. Hello, caller. Caller? Where is the foreskin? Where is your foreskin? Yeah, I was just hoping maybe if they got foreskin. Your foreskin is probably in like um uh like Sandra a, Bullock's face cream. In Sandra Bullock's face cream? 
I was gonna say in one of those mounds of garbage. Like I think it's probably like a. Uh, it's probably not. No, I mean, you know. You know who has it. I don't know who has your foreskin. Your foreskin's gone. You, I, but I mean, you know. I mean, you know. I mean, proverbially, proverbially. I mean, oh, you know wait. who's got it. Are you? Wait, oh, actually, hold on a second. You're actually blowing my mind right now. Are you trying to say that medical waste? Is no, taken no. by the gnomes? I mean, the, I mean, I'm holding up. Yeah, gnome. Is that the uh, currently non-flagged ADL term that we're using now? Gnomes. Well, yeah, I get it. I mean, I get it. You know. I so the gnomes cool. are getting the foreskins, the teeth, the the cancer cells, whatever wh- whatever we cut out of people. Who's oh, that? That little metal box, like, whenever they rip shit out of you, you don't get to take it home with you. They put it in a little metal box, and the gnomes take it, don't they? They put it in a little metal box for you guys? What happens to you? Oh, man. I mean, I was, I was so small, I couldn't even fight them off. Oh, I don't, I don't think that. Well, okay, I well, couldn't. you've never seen little white metal boxes outside of uh, medical places? Oh man, those are the best. Uh, th- those are the best leftovers to find in a dumpster, man. I-, I actually called in because you were mentioning hobos. Oh. I just wanted to the the, the actual or, or uh, origination origin. Yeah, the actual origin of the term hobo means hospitality beyond occupancy. Ah, oh. really? Yeah. Did you pull that yeah, out of it, your, your butt, which stands for Between Ultimate Titty Tactics? Well, I mean, nobody judged uh, Mary Poppins for bed knobs and broomsticks coming out of her hoo So, I mean, hey, so what? Takes just a teaspoon of fucking vinegar to make the sugar go down. Uh, but it takes a bit more than that, dude, to let me... It takes a full handle of... Uh, Cuddy Sark to let me uh, turn loose on my foreskin. <laughs> well, okay, so beyond occupation, hospitality beyond, that just means... Uh, yeah, hospitality beyond occupancy. Is that for like, like you know, a, I, a, one of those places, like a hostel? Look, a, a hobo is the kind of guy that'll tell you, yeah, man, go ahead and go on in there and take a shit in that man's bathroom and fuck his wife. It's cool. Huh. That's, what, uh, that's how hobos got their name, man. I did not. I did not know any of it. This is great information. I should write the. I should write a book about this. Get worse. I don't well, know. Well, I don't know about it. I had a pen. Kind of hoping. It's kind of hoping we keep that between us girls. Well, girlfriend, I had a pen here. I was going to write this down, but now I can't find it. So the secret's safe between us. Here, I got a pen you can borrow, man. I was going to tell Illuminati, or tell you to tell Illuminati, man. Her, the problem with her short stories oh. is there's no, there's no, there's no identifying the antagonist or the protagonist in her tales. I'm left. Story's not over yet, though. They're yeah, but I mean, who's who who's am I? Who am I to story? root for? Who am I to root for? The the shitting dog. You might have to wait to find out. I'm not too sure. Like, I understand what you're saying. I hear you. I don't know who to root for either. The shitting dog or the girl with the taser or the, the, the taser itself. But I, I mean, I appreciate her work. It's better than what I can produce since I've uh, hit this Rider's Rock. You know, you've heard of Rider's Block, but uh, I hit Rider's Rock every night three or four times, and i got to go back to the dealer and get another one. Oh, uh, sir, we can't... Okay, we can't talk about drug use on the show like that, okay? Alcohol, weed is fine, but we're not talking about the rock on, on the show. Because then you'll start to smell what it's cooking. And, and why did he attend this competition to get an ass kicking so tremendous? Boy, you know you shouldn't bother this. Leave me alone like the sun said, gee, or he'll be fatherless. I got the Asiatic flow mixed with disco. Roll up on the scene like the Count of Monte Cristo. Josh, I can't believe that you have done this. For fuck's sake, that spider put her eggs in your ass for a reason. For when they hatch, 
you will yourself be a mother to a new generation of super intelligent spiders that will ultimately bite all of us in the ass. Concordantly, we must all donate to Nick the Rap. Bova, indeed. What the hell is that? That was, that was an amazing poem. Thank you for, thank you that caller. I guess thank you, caller, previously about the hobo information. But please, no, don't talk about the rap. I might get kicked off of YouTube, uh, which would be fine. It happened before. 917-719-592. Fuck YouTube. That, well, can I start over? <laughs> <laughs> can I start over? <laughs> you could. You could start over. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's pretty funny. I like that one. Um nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. Let's pick a newer voicemail here. Oh uh, yeah. I was just wanted to let you know this is Dinzu Zindu, Saggedy ass brother. And uh I wanted everybody in the sewer to know that I love taking it. Up the ass. Okay. Okay, Bindu. Get your ass fucking reamed, bro. Uh, oh, boy. Maybe we should listen to Zindu now. Uh, yeah, let's listen to a Zindu. Jinsu. <laughs> the Ginsu. Okay, let's listen to Zindu. This is Zindu reporting to you for the Dark Sewer Network News. Network. Dark Sewer Network News Network. Dark, this, this is Zindu for the Dark Sewer Network News. Thank you. Uh, in this week's most misleading title, uh, the award goes to FirstPost.com. Uh, I, I, I maybe this is just not a very big, uh, uh, very big article here. Let me just maybe if I copy and paste it, maybe it'll come up in a more. Uh, uh, sorry about the gas. Yeah, it's also on CNN.com, and all these places have the same fucking bullshit headline. So let's just get right into the headline, and then I'll tell you if, what, why I knew it was bullshit after I read the article. It, 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 was, it was like a one-two punch. It was like, oh, look at that headline. Oh, that was bullshit. Elon Musk tweets, yet another asteroid warning. Dash, NASA maintains that it's no threat. All right. Reading that headline, what do you gather? Well, I'll tell you what I gathered. Elon fucking Musk saw a fucking asteroid, says, holy shit, there's an asteroid, and then NASA was like, calm down, Elon. Elon, calm down. That's no threat. Nope, that's not what happened. <sighs> NASA, NASA said that there is a giant fucking rock coming towards Earth called the Egyptian god of chaos, Fophis. Apophis. Apophis. Come on, Apophis. And it's supposed to come close 31,000 kilometers to the surface of Earth on the 13th of April, 2029. Now, Joe Rogan saw this news story and wrote, NASA preparing for the colossal god of chaos to arrive in the next 10 years. Okay, Joe, that's fine. That's kind of what NASA said. More and then Joe? Elon replies to Joe Rogan, why is... When did Twitter become the fucking news network, okay? Like, it's it's really quite sad that that every news article is basically Twitter this, Twitter that, Twitter this, Twitter that, Twitter this, Twitter that. It's it's no... Where, where's the reporting? Where's the hard-hitting fucking reporting? Where's the questions? Where's the where's the facts and the truth? Okay, whatever. So then Elon Musk tweets... God damn fucking journalist. Great name. Wouldn't worry about this particular one, but a rock will hit Earth eventually, and we currently have no defense. All right, so now Elon Musk is like, all right, nothing's going to happen either. All right, so, so fucking, this news article made it seem like Elon Musk was talking about a fucking asteroid, and NASA said, don't worry, Elon. Turns out, NASA said that there's an asteroid. Joe Rogan fucking retweeted it, and then... Elon Musk replied to it. And now it's a fucking bullshit news article. Okay. 
whatever. And then, then it ends up, the article ends, oh, this is great. Perhaps Elon Musk's brilliance and hero complex will save the day before NASA's planetary defense? For now, we'll just have to wait and watch. How about this? Suck my dick. Fucking Zindu's oh. dick is going to break up the first asteroid. See, the one that they had to cut off, it became an asteroid killer. And we're going to launch it right up into a fucking asteroid when need be. So we got one Zindu dick missile waiting to save Earth. But, you know what, this is this is all fucking... Everybody patting each other on the back and jerking each other off to get into the news cycle. Anyway, this is a very upset, mad Zindu reporting to you for the Dark Sewer Network News Network. News Network. Dark Sewer News Network. Surprised I wasn't fired yet. <laughs> I'll be back later, you fucking earthlings. Oh, jeez. Okay, um... Wow, it's gonna be a long show here. It's gonna be a long show. I just got a an advertisement request for. But okay, we we got a guest last year. Let me read this here. Sultan of Soy, have you ever tanked the South Dakota Slam Fist? I posit that since you are a coastal soy who doesn't even own a car, you haven't. Clear water for the win. I leased a car for a while. I became pretty good pals with the co-worker ones, my family and his. It went well for years until one day at the lake. He took off his shirt and had a Dave Matthews logo fireball <laughs> tattoo. I didn't mean to play that Dave Matthews band song, okay? I that was... People are like, what do you do? There's a pre show, and I play songs, and Dave Matthews was in the loop. A fucking Dave Matthews tattoo? Get the fuck out of here. Okay, um. We're talking about. We're talking about gnomes, I think. A dude with a tramp stamp? Okay, I'm reading the chat room now. I'm sorry. Whew. Okay. Yeah, let's not read the chat room here. Let's uh, figure this out. Let's figure out uh, where we are in the show. Maybe more voicemail. We should probably do more voicemail. There's a lot of fucking voicemail. Oh, boy. There's so many from this this drunk guy right here. Pretty. I'm so pretty. I'm oh, so pretty and... All right, let's just burn through this oh, drunk guy stuff. Picky. What do we got here? What's up, Nick? What? Oh, okay. I'm so happy, said Nick. The holy crap! Google Translate is racist. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's listen to the rest of that one. What's up, Nick? The rat? Hold on. Do it again, just to make sure because he had beat flight. Now do it. God damn it, that hurts my ears. What's up, Nick the Rat? Hey. Ken Paul from Arkansas. Now I've been seeing so much shit up in this bitch, it ain't kidding. It's like fucking crazy up in Arkansas up and down here. Up and down here. Uh, I've got this friend. His grandpa's got no dick. Got it cut out because he got the prostate cancer. That sounds like Zindu. Cut off. He's fucking whores under the bridge. And with the strap on, a leather strap on, because that's how he knew it. Because he's like driving on. He's like, hey, it's my grandpa. And he's like, hey, hey, beep, beep. Hey, grandpa. <laughs> I don't even know how that goes, man. I tell you what. Y'all in Hog Stories got Tennessee and all that shit. I can give y'all some crazy input. Man, Arkansas Times, man. I'll give you some Arkansas Times up in there. But, let me tell you what's going on. You remember the senator that's dead? Cause I'm gonna, I went up and I deliver ice and shit. So I was like delivering ice to these people the other day. And they they had uh, bleach all over the place. And I was like, well, we all got it. A state senator laying up in here somewhere. They didn't think it was that funny. 
But I thought it was fucking hilarious. Pretty not funny, I don't guess. But anyways, uh, short rounds coming around, stuff. I would like to get Nick the Brat down here in Arkansas for Comic Con. I ain't got five pounds of meth, sorry Nick. But that's what you asked for, but I can't do that. I got found five pounds of, uh, these nuts. I could probably get a little bit of, uh, shrooms and stuff, too. Okay, we're going to cut that off there. Uh, maybe we'll come down to party in Arkansas a little bit later. Kev, but there are at least 20 more voicemails from you. Just letting you know. Okay, we're going to play another voicemail really quickly over here. Uh, let's just go randomly, dandomly, and pick A, B, C. Let's pick this one over here. Nick, yeah. Hello, Nick. You're talking about sock gnomes tonight. Well, I caught one. I caught one. She's in a, she's in a little jail cell. Listen to her. <laughs> hey, I'm tickling her feet. Listen to this gnome. Listen to this gnome. I caught a fucking gnome, Nick. They're real. Come on, talk. I'm poking her. There we go. There we go. Get some gnome action out of this motherfucker. All right, I'm going to fucking poke this one some more later tonight. I'll call you later. Bye. What the fuck? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't even, I don't know where to go. I don't, I don't know where to go anymore. This shit's getting crazy out here. Let's play another song. We're getting deep into the show. We're going to play some music. This one's called No Fate Zombie, Zombie Fish. Zombie Fish, No Fate. That was some good old role play indeed. Wow. It's almost one in the morning, everybody. East Coast. Part
we go to somebody official, we end up in jail again. He's got us again. We've got to do it ourselves. That's not my mission. Listen, understand. I am not a military objective. I'm a person and you don't own me. Fuck you! fish no fate <coughs> welcome back to nick the rat radio the only place where you could get stories about gnomes david lynch and beer i think the phone line i closed it but i'm gonna have to open it back up there's probably a gnome expert waiting to call me possibly We have a lot more show to go. I don't have much time. We might have to start doing blitz clips. Blue. Blue 32. Blitz clip. Zindu. This is Zindu reporting for you. Be free to be disturbing stuffer. This is the Swedish News Network. Schnurberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberber
But the survival rate is fucking rough. It's only like 20% of the people with it survive. So a lot of people are dying from this shit. And this seems to be like a, a big, a big old whoop de doo helpful thing. So hopefully the scientists don't get let down and, and stop fucking, stop fucking around with this shit. Hopefully they, they uh, man up and toke up and do some more tests with marijuana. And maybe, maybe we'll live longer. Maybe it'll be a longer, happier life for more people out there. And that's all, that's all we can really hope for, right? You know, unless, you know, fucking... Wow, I'm high. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Zindu reporting to you for the Dark Network Sewer News. Oh, fuck. All right, we're going to do part two. I'm not a story in a second. It's just that there's, like, so much fucking show that it's hard to get to all every... Like, okay, I actually disabled the voice line. But there's so many voicemails. Let's listen to another drunk Kevbot really quick. No? No drunk? Okay, let's fast forward that. <laughs> I think he was jerking off at that point. 917-719-5923. Let's listen to a voicemail that came to me. <laughs> Even calling my voicemails a good time. <laughs> I like that. I like I like just I like just laughing. That's nice. The Goblin Girl from the Mystery World. Oh, when they're a goblin, I start to wobbling. When they're a goblin, there ain't a problem. Pink all over, some is tan. The Goblin Girl from every land. They look good from any which way. Any time of day, you can hear them say, Goblin Girl. Take it away. The best kind of girl is a girl that's goblin. Just saying. It's true. All right, let's go do a gas blast really quick. And then we're going to play Nadia Part 2. Illuminadia, the story of Po, 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 Bo, Po, Boy. Okay, uh, gas, gas blast. Let me open that up. Uh, let me just make sure. I don't have any newer ones. If there's a newer gas blast, I'll read that, but there's not. So let's read an older gas blast. This is getting difficult now because the alcohol is kicking in. Hey, man. This shit's no joke. One time I was having sex with a lady, and, well, I thought I felt like tiny hands on my balls. I didn't think much of it because, like, sex sometimes... Feels weird, you know? I guess. Uh, but the thing is, like, before we started, I had a condom on. And then when I came, I came in her. We weren't able to find the condom anywhere. I'm telling you, it was the fucking sock gnomes. They steal dick socks, too. I do have a lovely boy now, though, and he is my heart. The only strange thing is he's only about five inches tall. Strange. Huh? Uh, Illuminati. Do, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, do, Illuminati. Let's listen to Illuminati part two. Settle down and listen up for story time With a girl whose name is kind of hard to rhyme la da 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 We all know her as Illuminatia Illuminatia Story time with Illuminatia 
poor old Skip to you. And they were smiling as though they were anticipating something good. And on the screen, there was a man sitting behind a desk. He was wearing a blue suit with a white shirt and an ugly yellow and red polka dot tie. He was smiling broadly, showing off white, straight teeth. Hello, everyone, he greeted. Hello, Chuck, the family responded. Well, I see you're enjoying a nice lunch, he observed. Can I have some? The family laughed. Skip didn't see what was so funny. Say, he said, I was wondering, how are the plans going with the human indoctrination? Natalie smiled and nodded enthusiastically. Great, she said. They have no idea that we're any different from them. Yes, agreed their mother. We have many of us in power in the U.S. and Britain, as you know, but we also have agents in their educational facilities in much larger numbers now. Their youth is starting to become passionately, if not violently, behind our message. Excellent, excellent, responded Chuck. Oh, said Chuck, and have the escaped hatchlings decreased in number? I believe so. We only shot two today. Jessica is getting to be a real good shot, said Joe, as he lightly punched Jessica in the arm. Jessica beamed up at her father, and then up at Chuck on the screen. I'm sure they'll be destroyed soon. Gosh, things just go wrong sometimes, don't they? said Chuck. The family laughed again. Skip was grateful for having fur, because at the moment, he felt the blood drain from his face. Oh, well, I see you have a new pooch there, said Chuck, turning his attention towards Skip. There was something about the man's eyes that made Skip uneasy. They were too glossy. Oh, yeah, that's old Skip, said Jessica. He's adjusting. Oh, he looks like a good fella, said Chuck. Make sure you take good care of him now. He will, said the two girls in unison. Well, folks, I think we're all up to date now, don't you? Yep. Good to hear from you, Chuck, said Joe. Bye, old Skip, said Chuck to Skip. Skip didn't respond. That's a weird dog you have there. He didn't wag his tail or anything, said Chuck, frowning. Ah, uh, poor old Skip, he's just getting used to things, said Jessica. She got up and squatted next to Skip. Skip tensed, and she stroked his back. He sat up and managed to wag his tail so the humans wouldn't become more suspicious of him. See, he's warming up already, said Jessica, patting Skip on the head twice. Oh, well, that's a good little fella, said Chuck. Well, I'm signing out. Goodbye. <coughs> what the fuck, thought Skip. Goodbye, <coughs> the family said. What the fuck is wrong with this family, Skip thought. The screen shot off, and the family all turned to each other and smiled. Well, it's high noon now, said Joe. I think it's about time that we sunbathed. I think you're right, dear, said Stephanie. Skip watched as Joe's mouth started to open, and it opened wider and wider. Skip cocked his head to one side inquisitively as he watched Joe's mouth just keep getting wider and wider. With one loud pop, his jaw unhinged completely, and there was something coming out of his mouth. Skip was so terror-stricken and transfixed on Joe that he hadn't noticed that the rest of the family was doing the same thing. He only noticed when the pops of their own jaws turned Skip's attention away from Joe. Skip's ears went down and he whined as he backed away. Suddenly, the skin on Joe's face snapped backwards like an elastic band. From where his mouth used to be came the head of a green reptile. Its eyes were closed at first. But as a layer of ectoplasm slid off its face, two large orange eyes blinked until the goop was cleared from them. The human skins of the rest of the family started to pop back too, and lizards of three other colors emerged. Blue, yellow, red. The red lizard that was once Jessica rolled one large eye towards Skip. She said. Poor old Skip pissed on the ground and turned to run out into the backyard. <coughs> yelled one of the other lizards. Their voices were indistinguishable at this point. Skip ran into the backyard and frantically looked around for an opening in the fence to escape from. He was panting and whining in panic. When Skip turned around, he noticed that Jessica had come after him. She was shuffling awkwardly with her still-human hands extended towards Skip, 
and human skin draped around her lizard shoulders like a feather boa. She asked. Skip yelped and dashed towards the fence, looking frantically for any place he could escape. Uh, He found a small hole that an animal, hopefully a rabbit, may have been using to get in and out of the backyard from. Skip started to dig fiercely at the hole as Jessica slowly shuffled towards him. A loud thump caused Skip to turn around and see what the noise was. Jessica had apparently tripped, and she was now scrambling on the ground towards Skip. Fuck! No! From behind Jessica, Skip could see the rest of the family making their way towards him. Joe was almost halfway out of his human skin. His tongue was tasting the air as he made his way towards Skip. Skip turned around and started to dig faster. He made a hole just big enough for him to squeeze through, so he squeezed his head under the fence, then wriggled his body under. He was nearly out on the other side when he felt something clamp on his foot and felt razor-sharp needle teeth sink into his skin. Skip yelped in pain and tugged his foot desperately. The lizard's mouth was firmly clamped onto his foot. Skip wriggled desperately until his foot came free. The lizard's teeth tore off quite a bit of Skip's skin. Skip yelped again and dashed away from the fence as fast as he could. (coughs) Screamed the Jessica lizard as she watched Skip run away. She had snaked her head through the hole Skip just dug, but couldn't get the rest of her body through. The scream echoed down the street as Skip ran, ignoring the pain in his foot. Skip ran for days, finding water here and there and bits of scrap and garbage, until he was finally able to make his way out of the lizard compound. He had found himself in Washington, D.C. eventually, where all the lizards lived, but he didn't know this. Skip wanted so badly to tell the real humans about what was happening there, but poor old Skip. He's just a dog. Those are my hands clapping, by the way. Just like it was put that out there. That story made me feel weird. Like, I feel like I'm indoctrinated into a whole nother weird thing. That was... There was no protagonist in that story. That was just like a fucked up story. It's... I'm a little... I'm a little fucked up in the head right now from it. I don't know... Just gotta let that sink in for a little bit. Those screams. Ugh. That's horrifying. That's fucking horrifying. Um. Let's talk about gnomes. For a second. I have a list of... I have a big list of missing things that gnomes probably took. We have, let's just go over this really quickly. A couple of things, and then maybe we'll do some more later. Cromwell's head. After winning the Civil War, Civil War, Oliver Cromwell died in 1658, was buried in Westminster Abbey, but when the monarchy was restored, Charles II had him exhumed. Hung and decapitated. His head was on a spike outside of Westminster Hall until the mid-1680s, then passed through many hands until 1960 when it was buried in the ground of Sydney College, Cambridge. But the college will not reveal its location to allow scientific analysis. It may not be his head at all because there is doubt that his real body was ever buried at Westminster. All right, so Oliver Cromwell's head is probably in Gnome World right now. All right? His head's gone. There's a lot of stuff that's gone. Amelia Earhart's crashed aeroplane. Fucking gone. Gnomes. Blackbeard's treasure. Fucking gone. Gnomes. 
The Lost City of Z. Okay, well, I don't know if Gnome stole a whole city. So maybe we'll stop there. Should I open up the phone lines again? Whoa, what the fuck is this? That's got a donation. Somebody just gave me... Holy shit. Somebody just... $9,999.99. That's almost 10 grand, people. We are making buckaroos down in the sewer. But that's not enough. So we need more advertisements. Now, this advertisement, this is, a, this is something new. I usually don't do live ads, but this is a live ad read. read. Um... If you're ever feeling like you have too much energy or you can't get to sleep, and this, this is a problem I've had before, but I found a solution. It's a new drink called GHB Fuel. You might be like, Nick, GHB, I heard a lot of bad things about it. But that's in an uncontrolled environment when it's given to you uncontrollably. But... If you take GHB fuel knowingly and you give it to yourself at the proper doses at the proper times, it's perfect. Now, you might be also hearing G fuel in there, which apparently has no sugar, but they do put other stuff in it that's not even labeled because the FDA doesn't have to label it like that fake ass sugar. Suc sucralose. Sucralose? Suc Sorry, I'm doing the bad. I'm doing a bad live read here. Uh, there's fake sugar in there that, at certain temperatures, could give you cancer. So G Fuel doesn't have to tell you everything that's inside of their product, but GHB Fuel is letting you right off the bat know that it's GHB. All right, this is a super product. Now, you might be wondering. How is this legal? Well, that's all I can really say about that. But it is a great product. I've tried it myself. For only $69.99, you get a canister. Now, you only need about a teaspoon in a cup of water. Not even. Maybe just like a pinch. Unless you really want to go crazy. Now, you should not give this to other people. This is part of the legal clause. Only give it to yourself when you need it. It does what it has to do. Now, if you need more information on GHB Fuel, give me a call at 917-719-5923. We could talk about it, and I could get you on a line with an operator who could get your address, your social security number, and your credit card number? We'll have this shipped out to you in about five days. That's all it takes. You are going to sleep easy, my friends. Let me tell you, I love this product. GHB Fuel. Don't be a fool. Get the fuel. That's... I just made that slogan up right there. Okay, um... Maybe we could uh, open up the phone lines again and see if the gnome expert calls us. I don't know if the gnome expert out there that I talked to recently is still on awake, but 917-719-5923. Hey, Nick. Uh, how you doing, man? Um, I'm coming, coming into... Uh Frequency with you. Uh, look forward to the frequency increasing. Um, one thing about the breasts. Um, what? Did, did they? Or, 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 just delete this. Just delete this. Nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. Hi, this is a message for Zidu. I just wanted to make sure that Zindu was feeling better. 
and uh, maybe if he needs any drugs, he should just go to North of the border. You know what I mean? Okay, bye. You gotta love those Canadians. They just, they have that, they're just so cute. Um, maybe we are at a music break time stop, perhaps? I think we are. Yes, we are. We are at music break time. Enhance ESCP. Let's listen, you and me. Everybody, grab your GHB fuel. Sit back. Oh, wait, we got a phone call coming in. Hello? Hello? Is this the gnome expert? I could say that. I could say it, but I could also say other things like, um, whoop a dee doo. Terrifying, Tim, and I am here to tell you about a gnome. You have a story a about a gnome? Tim. I know a gnome, and I know what what they do, what one does, what one is made of. Can you could lead. can you elaborate for us? Yes, yes. I think the gnomes have moved on from gardening up to farming, and. He loves ice cream and fat bites. Wait, but the, the gnomes, gnome I know, they're gardening gnomes? Yes, he moved on up to farming, so, so he doesn't garden anymore. Okay, so you're saying you know this gnome. You're a gnome knower. Do you yes, know I this gnome, gnome to be gnome. a thief at all? Is this a Theban gnome? No, but ever since I have known this gnome, I haven't been able to find my socks. Has this known gnome ever been in your home? No, not that I know of, but, hmm. but that is the point of thieving, to not be seen. Okay, and but uh, all right. Those gnomes. I have a question about the socks, though. Do you keep them okay. in a secure place, say, possibly under a a tome? No, no. I think I should. You might want to keep the, I... your socks under a tome because if there's a known gnome in your home and you have your socks under a tome. You might be okay. My my trainer, Scary Perry Caravello, he didn't tell me that. But you have. I did. Thank you. You might so, also be able to jam your socks into a saxophone. Do you play the saxophone? I used to. You used to play the saxophone? How did you know? All right, grab an old saxophone and put it under a tome so if the known gnome comes into your home, he won't be able to steal shit from you. It'll all be in the saxophone. Okay. Gnomes don't know saxophones. They don't? Huh? Okay. They don't. And if you want, I think we are selling a bone that could keep away the gnomes, especially if they're known, out of your home. And they won't be able to look under your, your tomes or in your saxophones. How can I use this bone to keep the gnome away? Well, I, Do I hold throw on, it me, at the gnome? I could, grab the, I could grab this bone and show you the power of the bone. Hold on one second, and I'll put it next to the phone. One second. Yeah, this this bone here is a hundred percent made from uh, ex co host uh, th uh, thigh bone, and you just have to shake it a couple times. 
Now, even over the phone, this no no might not be able to come into your home because of what I'm doing with this magical bone. But you should still probably keep your socks in a tome or Whoa. under your saxophone. I can hear it. You hear that? I can hear it. Yeah, so you're good to go. You're not going to lose any socks tonight, my friend. But what I'm wondering yeah. is does the power from a gnome come from his beard? What if the gnome loses his beard? Well, that's a good question. I do know that gnomes do get a lot of their powers from their beards. So, we also do sell magical stones that you could sharpen your razor on. Uh, I don't know if I have any around me right now. I don't have any magical stones to keep the known gnomes out of your home. But we because do have this bone, and you still have that saxophone. You might also maybe you could use a tome. But the stone, it, you could shave the gnomes with the stone and the, the blade. You'll be good to go. So, yeah, there's many options for you, sir. Okay, okay. See, the, this gnome, he recently lost his beard, so I think I can... And, but my socks haven't been reappearing either, though, so I, I don't know if that has any correlation or if he's weaker without his beard, but I can use the bone in my saxophone. Yes, you're right. I but just need to get a tome. Also, don't forget, Noel, you, you don't have the tome. We, we could probably, we, I think we have a tome we could send to your home. That's, that's no problem. Okay. Do you, have, do you have any other questions for me? No, no, I... All right, that's, then bye. Okay, that's all that we really needed to know. Now all the no knowns are known about that guy's home and the gnomes. And wow, I wish he played the saxophone for us. But also, don't forget, for sixty nine ninety nine, you get this bone. We might even throw in the uh, blade sharpening stone. Okay, that's enough of that shit. Let's go back to this song.
seven, seven, one, nine, five, nine, two, three. You gotta do that shit. You gotta get fucked up. I just gotta let you know right now, man, you're doing great stuff, and I fucking love you, man, you're so rock. SCP with Enhance, Enhance Your Life with GHB Fuel today. Um, hi, everybody. We're back to Nick the Rat Radio. We're not wrapping up just yet because the gnomes might come around and rip that shit off of your... F- and boo, before you even know it. But we are going to read another gas blast because we have more. We have more voicemail, too, but it's mostly just Kevbot being drunk off his ass. So let's not do that. So I want to say thanks again for all the donators and the person that just donated and uh, the person that donated the week before that and the one or two people that donated the weeks before that. And any subscribers, you know who you are. I have a p- couple of people that have been subscribing for a long time, like Hollow Books. Boy, oh boy, they've been around for a long... Whoa. I got a phone call coming in. I'll talk about Hollow Books a little bit later. Hello, caller. Oh, hi, Nick the Rat. I'm calling. Got some questions for you about gnome. You have gnome questions? I have no more good gnome questions. <laughs> okay, well, I'm all ears and a tail and some fur. So lay it on me. And nipples. Many nipples. A lot of them, like well, eight. Okay, so have we already gone over that gnomes steal more than just socks? Is that correct? Yes, they steal underwear, condoms, socks, heads, car keys, etc. Wait, you said heads? Heads. Yeah, apparently there's a guy named Cromwell had his head stolen. Gone. That's heavy. It was about a couple pounds, like ten. Damn. Okay. So, I was thinking, right, what if we just started a gnome gang We just started stealing shit? Like, why well, can't we be gnomes? You want to join the gnomes and steal, well, but they're, they're pretty small. Like, I'm, I'm only about seven, eight inches, but the gnomes are even smaller than me. They are? Oh, I thought they were, huh. They're like they five they're inches. They're like, I've seen them bigger, I guess. I don't know. How, what's the gnome? Let's look up average gnome size. Average gnome size. Here we go. Average gnome size. Gnome size. Oh, shit. Um, I guess I'm seeing micro gnomes because according to Google and, D- and <laughs> D&D 5th edition, gnomes are like three to four feet tall 
and about 40 pounds. Okay. See, that's what I thought. I thought they're okay. Well, maybe maybe you're thinking of like, remember David? Was David that the Gnome? Show? David the Gnome, yeah. I saw him when I was a little kid. I don't know. David the Gnome, he was very, very tiny. David the Gnome. I don't know what the, I have no idea what you're talking about. Wait, let's. <gasps> <laughs> I know David the Gnome. Yeah, he's got the little, He did, they do the kissy nose thing. <laughs> Man, do you know how much like we were watching that as kids, and he was having sex with his wife in front of us with his nose? Yeah, this whole time it's very inappropriate. So, like, okay, so gnomes, right? Why aren't they being arrested for all this theft? I mean, they're well known for stealing. They're now, first of all, is well that racist? Known for it. Yeah, is that racist? Like, when you say gnome, you're like, hey, that's a gnome. They steal, like. Is that? that it's not. Of, it's not like, all if, gnomes. It's not all known gnomes. You know what I'm but it's it's a lot of them. It's a lot of gnomes. Like you're like, okay, you know, it's a gnome. You know, the gnome walks into your store. You're like, shh, quiet. The gnome's gonna steal the sock. You know, like, how does that gnome feel? Well, they're a little squishy. <laughs> right? But now, if we're if we're using David the gnome as a placeholder for gnome gnome or gnomes, uh, the the D and D gnomes are a lot bigger than David the gnome because D- David the gnome is he's riding on a fox now. Unless that fox is sure is about six feet big, which would be awesome. I don't think he is though. Then that gnome yeah. is that gnome is mere inches. From what I remember, last time I played D&D was 3.5. And so the gnomes in that one, they were always like the tinkerers, you know? They're always... They're not... Yeah, they're usually not thieves. It's usually like um, the halflings that are thieves and stuff. Right, yeah, the halflings or the dark elves. Man, this show's getting racist over here. Whoa, Keemstar is a gnome? Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I'm looking through pictures. What if all the like tech, big tech people are gnomes? What if they're all gnomes and they steal? No, that's just stupid. They might be <laughs> gnomes that crawl up people's butts. They There's might be, that type of gnome too. They could be. Yeah, what are they butt stealing gnomes. up there? They're stealing what your they brains. Wanna... They're going to the wrong place. <laughs> Unless you have <laughs> butt brain. Well, it's it's hard to get into your into your head. Through your ear. They're big enough to get in your butthole. They're not big enough to get into your ear hole. So they go yeah, in but there. I'm, I mean, but it's harder to... That's okay. We won't go into anatomy. It's boring. Eh, could be fun. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, I think I think gnomes have it pretty rough, you know? I, I'm sure that the Steve gnomes, they only account for like... Five percent of the gnome, the entire gnome population. You know, I just. I don't really know too much. Do you, do you have you ever met a gnome? Are you a gnome knower? A gnome, a gnome knower. God damn you, gnome knower. Um, <laughs> Are you a gnome sympathizer? <laughs> I don't want you. I don't. I don't want them gnome knowers in here. Get, get the fuck out of my place. <laughs> you got any gnomes okay. in your garden? You, uh. No, I, I, I really don't know any gnomes. No gnomes. I know no gnomes. No, no gnomes? I think no, no gnomes. Wow. It's fun. That's a fun thing. There's a lot of things that rhyme with gnomes. <sighs> Are you it's a, a good you're, episode? You're a musician, aren't you? I could hear it in your voice. I, I, yeah, actually, yeah. I've did done you that ever, longer than anything else in my life. Did you ever use a metronome? <laughs> I did use it a lot. In that. My favorite were those wood ones with the metal tickers. A you just slide the thing metronome. up and down to change. Okay. Yeah, the little metal. You just slide the big metal slider thing up and down to change the... Uh-huh. Uh, big wood and the slide tempo. the metal thing up and down. Ah, man. I didn't know these, these city gnomes were 
have such musical helpers. These metronomes. They're metronomes. Hell, hell them. <laughs> That's so funny. This is getting good. <laughs> Play on words. <laughs> I don't know how good it's getting. But it's getting going somewhere, I guess. Um, gnome phones. Gnome phones on the metronome. The trombone ring, ring, and the bones ring, and the gnome. Ring, ring. No phone. That's not very catchy. <laughs> no phone. It's gotta be a song. Fletcher, uh, I'm I'm sure Fletcher can get no phone tone. <laughs> okay. More I'll things rhyme with gnome than you'd think. It's uh. I know. A lot of things. Some 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 things are hard to rhyme. Some things are easy to rhyme. Some names. Some names are kind of hard to rhyme. Other things, like gnomes, are easy. Instead of stealing, Please. why don't these gnomes take out loans? Well, because loans... Gnome loans make them groan when they're on uh, the phone. I don't want to be on they're the like, phone too long. It make me groan, too. <laughs> Fuck those gnome yeah. loans. <laughs> Damn, no, damn, damn, no loans. <laughs> oh my god! I gotta start doing that. I had some beer. Yeah, um, some beer. Some beer. I didn't really eat a whole like at my job. It's just so I eat, and then all I did was drink when I came home. I had a long meeting. Just you need came some home, food. You I need protein them. and uh, iron and vitamins. <laughs> well, fuck that. Pilgrims and gnomes. You know, sometimes they're like. I'm hungry. I'll have a beer, and then they're full. Do you think gnomes drive cars? Well, how the fuck do they steal so much shit if they don't drive cars? Like, what do they put it in? They have these tiny little arms. They can't carry all that. All these socks. They got to figure, like, come on. It's they true. drive cars. Do you think maybe we don't see their cars because their their cars are painted in chrome? And they reflect a lot of light. So gnomes got the chrome, steal the bone and the thome and the thome and moan on the phone, taking out loans. <laughs> and they're chrome. And this has got to be a song. Please, God, somebody out there who's talented, more talented <laughs> than me, make please a song make a song. Out of this Let's on a trombone. A song. <laughs> gnome zone. If there's one thing I can get for Christmas, it's a gnome song. A gnome tone. tone. A gnome I met song. your gnome. You, see, gnome. you gotta put a southern slong on your gnome. Ba -dong, ba -dong, ba -dong, gnome ba -dong. I'm gonna have to do it. It's gonna suck, but somebody's gotta do it better than me. I gotta figure it out. This is, this is too good. Anyway, I've been inspired. Although I have to probably write your stories. Anyway, I'm just rambling. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> yeah, get out of here, you rambler. Rambling, rambling, gnome tome, groaning, lone. Would you like gnome. to say goodnight to America? Good night, America. Good night. There you go. You said it. Ah, you got hung up on. We have still mong dong bong splong smong. On the bone. Well, let's listen to another Zandong. Welcome back to Dark Sewer News Network with your friendly space alien news reporter, sex extraordinaire that got over the worst STDs in the world by lopping off one of his own penises that will now protect Earth from oncoming asteroids, unlike Elon Musk can... Zindu is back coming at you. And not only is Elon Musk not going to protect you from asteroids, he, apparently he's got a, a problem with Walmart. Walmart suing Tesla. That's Elon, I guess. Over fucking solar panel flaws. Yes, yes, yes. Solar panels. They're going to save the world. No, they're not. They never were. Solar panels aren't there yet. They are only cheap because they're subsidized by the government. Fuck. If you really want to have something powerful, get nuclear all up in here. Subsidize nuclear, make it safe, fucking milk that shit. You know how much fucking pollution comes off that? Nothing. You know how much pollution comes off from these solar panels? 
a lot. These solar panels aren't just made of nothing. They're made of they're made of stuff. It's where does stuff come from? It comes from fucking other stuff. And to make stuff into other stuff, you gotta use energy. Either way, they're not efficient for one. And apparently, two, they are burning down Walmart's. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe it's a good thing. I don't fucking know now. Um, let's see. Many of the Tesla solar panels inspected by Walmart were suffering from hot spots, resulting in cracking on the back of the sheets of the solar modules and compromised electrical insulation. Making matters worse, Tesla has flagged or identified hot spots by placing pieces of tape over the affected areas. Because this tape prevented sunlight from reaching the solar panel, it exacerbated the problem by further concentrating heat. Tesla teams consistently failed to torque or tighten field-made connectors. The lack of the torquing... Ah, fucking love torquing. ...leads to moisture and water intrusion. Sharp points, from among other items, rough concrete or metal edges, were cutting into or abrading wires. In other cases, temperature changes result in expansion and contraction of the wires over time, moving the wires and resulting in their abrasion or exposure. Multiple sites had improper grounding. Yes, these things that were installed... Low B, low B, less B, like only a couple years ago, like five, six years ago, they're falling apart. They're they're not lasting. They're they're. Whenever I hear anything about solar panels, like oh, they last like fifty years. No, they don't. What kind of crap is this? They're selling us. This shit lasts like fucking ten years max. They 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 don't hold charge. They don't they they don't produce as much energy over time. There's. You don't get the one that's cloudy and it's, it's nighttime. You don't get no fucking sun, so that's what you do during the nighttime. You have to fucking put the hamster on the wheel all night. I guess that works. Anyway, uh, this might be a big issue for Tesla because uh, you know shit doesn't seem good for them. Anyway, this was uh, Zendu for the Dark Sewer News Network. I'll be back a little bit later. Yabba dabba 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 Wow. Yes, yeah, but yeah, but don't do that again, please. Um, nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. We're about to end the show. Hopefully, nothing there. No song. Right, let's read the gas blast. Uh, howdy, Sultan of Soy. Have you checked out the stock market lately? Maybe there are stock gnomes involved in stealing that cash. We have a phone call coming in. Hello, caller. Caller? Nick Jordan Peterson again. Hi, Jordan. A quick thought about gnomes. Yeah. I'm going to set up a Bitcoin address with the idea being that they'll grow wild weed all over the place on railroad tracks and whatnot. So just send your Bitcoin to Joe 30330 and I'll get it to the gnome. Thank you, Jordan Peterson. 9177195923. What is this? What the fuck is no, not don't call. Don't call them. Just play it. Sorry. I'm fuck nigger. A motherfucker. Bloody comes these curtains, talk son of a bitch, shit falls. This okay you recorded, damn hard hell. Okay, let's uh, listen to another song. Milky Way at Night, Cosmo Wave, Zendiv Remix. We'll be back in a little bit with more Nick the Rat Radio. Coming on the fucking third hour. Jesus Christ, let's get out of here.
Damn. That shit was an amazing song right there by... Cosmo Wave, Milky Way at Night. <laughs> I think we learned a lot about gnomes. David the Gnome, Gnome, Homie Gnomes. Uh, we're coming to the end of the Shimmer the Gnome Show, the Gnome Show. Uh, we still have some more stuff we can talk about. We still have uh, things that are missing. JFK's brain. Jules Remet Trophy. I thought this was a hundred legendary things, not like four. There, there should be more. There is more. Wait, those are, ooh. Hello, mama. Okay, well, that's not the... Let's... The dying void... void no, voicemail? Oh, man. More drunk Kevbot? Okay, let's... Let's let's try drunk Kevbots one last time. We'll just, we'll just play this to embarrass them over here. Let's play this one. Nick. They found me. I tried my hardest. <laughs> so true. Hmm. They're going to kill me. I love you, Kevbot, man. Have a good night, and uh, let's listen to more voicemail. Then we'll play Zindu. We'll get the fuck out of here. Hi, Nick. I'm just uh, checking in here from uh, in Region 6. Uh, I'm enjoying a handle as we call it, or a, a handle, a handle. I'm enjoying a handle of a uh, Cuddy Sark. I enjoy from handle Glasgow. as well. Uh, 2018. <laughs> they aged it like a full six months before they put it on that uh, Chinese frigate of uh, shipping containers to uh, get it on over here to uh, Central Texas. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, some really classy shit, this Cuddy Sark. Uh, I like to jam Nick the Rat as a... Okay. Maybe this voicemail will make more sense, I don't know. Hi, hi. Is this, is this Nick? Yeah. My name is Little Cuddy. Ah. Uh, Oh, I like podcasts. Mm, I listen. I listen to yours. Yours is okay, but I, I really like listening to to Hawk Story with a uh, you know, Carol and Fletcher. And Fletcher's voice makes me touch myself. So maybe you should have him on the show more often. If you could maybe give him to see my being Teddy. Okay. I had to go for my parents to know that I took their phone to call you. Bye. The fuck was that? Um, I think we're coming close to an end of the show. We do have some more gas blasts. Let me read these and then we could go. Okay, I gotta go through here pretty quick here. The longest show ever. Uh, hey, Nick. I used to know a girl who would steal garden gnomes. Shit you not. Whenever we would went to her house to fool around, I'd be surrounded by those little fuckers. It felt like a surreal fever dream directed by David Lynch or something. I had to stop the relationship quickly. I started to get trained to get hard around small. Um, gas blast. Here we go. Uh, how do you Nick the rat? This is Buford T. from Tennessee. I usually call you, but I lost my voice calling for my pigs today. I love drinking uh, on the moonshine and painting my pigs up with glow-in-the-dark paint. Dear God. I'll be right back.
glow in the dark paint <laughs> and sending them out at night and shooting my gun off in the air. Looks like a fucking UFO pinball machine or something. Well, anyways, the old moonshine's calling. Talk to you later. Okay, uh, Buford Tay. All right, everybody. I think that's uh, all the show we have for you tonight. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm going to play one more song. This one's called Mariana Lively Apollo Brainberg FPV Poor Fucking this is a long ass thing. Intenso EDM. Have a good night, everybody. See you next week. building a rat ship here. No killing animals! Rats have rights! Buy on veggies! Rats have rights! Get the fuck out of here! I'll see you tomorrow.